All right. Well, welcome to Barstool Sports, Mr. John Buckley, TikTok famous. Hey, look at that. I appreciate it. In you two months. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a heck of a two months. You have yeah. over, over 300,000 on TikTok. You're yeah. growing there like crazy. Um, I, I, that's where I found you on TikTok. Um, you are, what, New York City's number one watch dealer? Um. I'm a watch dealer in New York. I don't know yeah. if I'm number one. I'm the biggest, well, I'm not even the biggest TikToker in New York of the watch dealers. There's like maybe one one guy, but he does different kind of stuff than I mm-hmm. do. But I'm like the number one vintage guy vintage, in New York. Okay, good yeah. Deal. yeah, well, I, know, I noticed uh, it, it takes a lot for to get my attention. I got the ADD running everywhere. I like um, it. But I like your videos because uh, they're fun and mm-hmm. educational. And I... I didn't know the first thing about watches. Mm-hmm. Um, I've owned, I think my only watch that I've ever owned is like a gold Seiko that nice. I bought for like $180 at Sam's Club or something. Okay. And that's and that's that's what I was surprised. I was surprised to get those to see those reactions in the videos where, you know, somebody will bring you a watch and go, hey, you know, it's not real, but it's a real nice watch. Listen, if it tells time and you put it on your wrist and you're not using your cell phone, it's a win yeah. as far as I'm concerned because a lot of... A lot of younger people are not, re- you know, we're like this, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. my son's the same way. And they don't really wear the stuff. They're looking at it more as an investment. I mean, that's – and it's kind of sad. It's, yeah. it's sad. And, that, and that's I'm, – I'm glad you brought that up because that's – I'm in the sports card hobby. Mm-hmm. So I'm all about sports cards. And we had a major spike uh, during COVID and everything. Oh, yeah. People had all this extra money. They didn't know what to do with it. So they were buying sports cards a lot of them as an investment. And so did y'all, did y'all see the same thing in the, in the watch we, industry? I do. I, I'm dialed into that, you know, that space. And cause I do, I do sports, ma'am. I do certain sports, ma'am. And I like world series rings, mm-hmm. things like that. I'm big on it. That's how I know our, our mutual Ken friend. Yeah, Ken. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it's amazing that Pokemon blew up. I mean, really blew up in that time. But the funny thing about COVID was people were home and a lot of my European buyers and sellers were sitting around and all they did was do business. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, oh my God, what are you gonna do? You can't go to the city. I was like, well, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been set up to work online for 20 years. And it was really, we didn't miss a beat. We had very, very strong years, the two years of COVID, fortunately. Yeah. You know, and it's just one of those things where you never know, you know, you just never know what's going to what's going to, you know, pop off. And yeah. this has been popping off now for the better part of, I don't know, four years now where everybody's kind of like, you know, everybody wants to get into the watch game, you know, and it's like same thing with sports cards and Pokemon. I mean, Pokemon was always big, mm-hmm. but now it, it turned into this whole, you know, the dark Charizard around, you know, the neck of some YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, okay. I mean, listen, God bless him. You know, I mean, I have no hate towards any of those guys. Yeah. It's like, it's good for everybody. You know, it really is. And that's, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I see there are on the same thing happened with the sports cards and kind of like what you're doing on TikTok, where you, you are showcasing your deals mm-hmm. you're recording everything and you can tell it's it's authentic yep. there are also videos i've seen on TikTok and youtube where you can tell it's very staged and it's, it's not even well done yeah. um and so does that have obviously that probably impacts your business as far as newcomers coming in that don't or don't realize it does that have any impact on your business at all it doesn't impact the business it gets me salty Mm -hmm. but i'm not you know it's funny we just had a situation um last night where uh, a a friend you know who you know we've known each other and done business he's doing you know a TikTok bit you know, they, they've been working really hard on, on a concept. And he has some guys going out there, and he gives them a certain amount of money to go out there and play watch dealers. Like, oh, my God, somebody shoot me. You know? <laughs> I mean, listen, no hate. But it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's like, oh, my God. And the guy walks into a place where we know the guys because <laughs> I've known these guys for 20 years. Okay? And I've known all of these people for 20, 25 years because that's how long a lot of us have been doing it together. And the guy walks in and he uses my my trademark. It's not a trademark. It's just my my real screw you type line. It's like, oh, how much is that $15,000 watch? Yeah. And the owner of the company like scolded him. Oh, really? Like publicly. He was like, oh, you really shouldn't do that because what if the, what if the person wants only 14,000? And I'm saying to myself, it's like, bro, <laughs> If you don't know what you're, you know, where you are when you're going to throw, a, you know, a lame offer at somebody, just like a, a screw you offer at somebody, it's like then you shouldn't be doing that. He's yeah. right, 
you know, but I mean, I know what I'm doing, you mm -hmm. know, I, and, and, you know, when I do those offers, I mean, people get, you know, they get a little put off by it, but for the most part, they know that I'm just lowballing them just for the sake of lowballing them. Cause to I just feel like off. just breaking the ice a little yeah. bit, have a little fun. And, and we do have fun. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, look, I've, seen the videos. I'm with, <laughs> I've got my son and my son's best friend. He's like, like my son. And we just run this circus. I mean, an absolute circus we run. And it's, we've been doing it, I've been doing it, like I said, on 47th Street since 2008. And, you know, the boys have been with me. My son spent years on the street. Tyler started with me on the street in 2018, went to college for a whole two weeks, and then left, and that's when we all started Vukum. Yeah. And it's been, you know, it's been interesting. You know, it's been interesting. It, it's the watch business. And, you know, I've got a certain amount of, I don't want to say influence, but, you know, I've been around and people mm -hmm. know me. And, you know, it was pretty easy to just, you know, do business with, you know, to have him and my son come with me and start doing certain things. And now with the social media content, it's it, it's it's taxing, to be yeah. honest with you, you know, to do these things on camera. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we do them anyway, but it's like to have the camera rolling. And I'm one of these guys, I don't like to do things twice. I'm mm -hmm. going to do it. I'm going to do one take, that's it, you know, this is how it goes. And, you know, sometimes the people that we're doing it with, they'll be like, oh, wow, you know, I don't like the way it sounds. Like, listen, I'm not changing it. This is how it works. You know, we've been doing this 100 million views between my account and his account. Mm -hmm. Can't argue with that. No. You know, in two months. Yeah. Okay, so can't argue with that. You know, people are watching. They're watching for a reason. And it's fine with me, you know. I mean, every once in a while you get somebody like, oh, wow, you know, uh, they're buying and selling, you know, people's homes. It's like, okay, well, you know, I was buying and selling, you know, <laughs> T-shirts and sneakers. And, uh, you know, I've done this. I've built it up over, you know, the course of a lifetime to yeah. be able to do that. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's just kind of, you know. You don't take it personally. No. I don't personalize anything. And they and they can say the same thing about anything. I mean, oh, a, yeah. po a poker game. You know, oh you God, watch please. poker on ESPN. Uh, and they're, they're paying for you know hundreds of yeah. thousands of dollars. Yeah. So like, what's the difference? A lot of watch dealers are on. A couple of watch dealers are on that. Believe it oh, or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, so and so you've been doing this for for twenty plus years. Yeah. I think you, you said you started on eBay. Yeah. Is that, I started. Like, that was where it started. Yeah, I started in the mid nineties, um, ninety six, ninety seven. I started doing it like, you know, on eBay. I got registered on eBay in 99. And um, like I said, I started, it's funny, I tell the story all the time. I was telling it on TikTok the other day. Um, I started selling watch catalogs. One of them I found in the garbage, leaving my house, going to my work, my job in Bushwick, where I was running a social service program. And I look, and there was a catalog. It was a big, thick one. I looked at it, and there were watches on it. And I always liked watches. And I'm like, oh, wow, look at this. And I took it, and I'm like, this little light went off in my head. And I'm like, wow, let me try to put this on eBay. I put it on eBay. It sold for $40. And right. I was just like, that was it. You know, I was just calling up, you know, watch companies, going to Torno, getting an extra catalog. Oh, can I have a catalog? Can I have one of these? And I would just you know, sell them and made a lot of money and, doing it. And so a watch catalog for, for, for the young for the young people at home is like, it was like a Sears catalog? It's like a book, yeah. Okay, yeah. Just like a book and they would have different brands. Some of them would have, like Tourneau would have like all the brands that they have. They were really nice and this is the days of, like the early days of the internet before people would go to Google. You know, I, I what was it? It was all AOL. Mm -hmm. I was like dial up. You got, you got the CD with oh like my God, minutes the CD for free. Yeah. And you'd sit there and it was slow, but it was, you know, it was, it was magical, mm -hmm. you know? And then we started, you know, I started doing the watch shows, you know, the circuit of National Watch and Jewelers, International Watch and Jewelers Guild, um, National watch Association of Watch and Clock Collectors. And I started meeting up with guys who sold, you know, parts, boxes, you know? And I started buying the stuff and putting it on eBay. And, you know, again, the story goes, it's like if something didn't sell for $100, I would raise the price. Uh, that's you know? that, yeah. So that, and yeah, if something didn't sell for two hundred dollars, I raised the price until it sold. And as that market started really taking hold, okay, I was right there in the beginning. Me and a couple of other guys, you know, vintage guys who who dealt in old stuff because we didn't really buy new stuff because you couldn't really get new parts. You know, we okay. would go into the older stuff, and then the older stuff started taking flight in the mid early two thousand, like two thousand three, two thousand four. There was this huge like upswing in all of that stuff with the auction houses and things like that and uh yeah we just took it for a ride yeah you know so and you you would bump up the price oh you yeah. wouldn't lower the, the price well if i lowered the price the perceived value would be lessened 
So I said, you know what? I'm going to raise the price each time. And it's just, you know, it, it was a gamble. You know, mm -hmm. I took a shot. It was, you know, well, I, I was, I, in all honesty, I mean, I had just had a, I just moved to New Jersey. I had a new house, new baby, new mortgage, and I quit my job. I was working at the YMCA. I was, I was a year away from being vested and I left and I'd made my own hours. I would go in, but it was a long ride and it was really taxing uh, and I couldn't do it anymore. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I'm going to give it a shot, and you know, worked out. Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, so, I would so, say so, so too. Far, so good. So yeah. far, so good. And know? so you mainly, so you're you're a watch dealer, as they would. Is, mm -hmm. is that a, is that a proper title? Yeah, sure. Okay, Absolutely. so a dealer. So you're, but you're not just dealing. You're not just going to was it 47th Street? Yeah, I spent years on. I spent you know before COVID, I was there four days a week. Really? You know, and, and I would drive in and out, no problem. But like now, we're just doing one day a week. Yeah, you know, it's just. I don't know. And I've, I've seen the videos. So it's not, you're not just going to 47th Street. You're not yeah. just, you know, going to this big, you know, uh, dealership. Mm -hmm. you're, I've seen deals you're running around. done in the parking in parking garage. Oh, yeah, or, I've done that. And yeah. so is that a normal thing or is that just if you know a guy? You know, in 2007, 2008, 2009, I started doing a lot of print advertising in my area and in New Jersey and Monmouth County. And I was going in the phone book. I was doing the penny savers. I was doing a lot of that stuff. And I would get calls from guys, you know, just wild calls in the middle of the night. Okay, meet me. I got to sell a gold chain or meet me. I want to, you know, sell my, my watch. And you got to be really careful. Yeah. You know, there are rules to doing this. You know, you've got to, there's got to be a two week hold and this, this and that. And you got to have all this. And, you know, you had to be smart about doing it because you couldn't do it all the time. You know, most of the time I would send them to a store that, you know, that I dealt with. I'd be like, look, you guys do the business, you know, whatever. I mean, when something comes in that I want, you let me know. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I would have to meet people. Yeah. And, man, stories. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart, I will no. tell you. Yeah. yeah but, but you're still it's, – sometimes it's still worth it. Oh, no, it was worth it. It was, it was a lot of experience, mm -hmm. you know. It was like you're dealing with people that, you know, who knows what their circumstances are. You know, and you make a deal over the phone and then you've got to see them in person and you've got to validate what it is that they actually told you they had, you know, it is, you know, it, it, you've got to make sure that it is what it is. And, you know, I would go with my little gold scale and a tester and, you know, my loop and my, you know, my lights and this yeah. and that. I'd be meeting guys in a CVS parking lot, you know, at yeah. midnight. And, and they, they may not know yeah. that what they have isn't real. Yeah, they, uh, that happens sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, people get... They don't, they don't like to be told that. Yeah. You know, they really don't. And a lot of times, I mean, I'm pretty experienced in looking at certain things, and I could tell from a, from a decent picture, or I could look across the room and I'll see something on the table, and I'll be like, that's not right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just you, dialed you've in seen like it that. so many times. Yeah. Yeah. When you handle it all day long, mm -hmm. okay, it's like that's what, that's what a lot of guys don't realize in this business. They, they learned by looking at pictures on the Internet. And that'll take you far, you know, but it won't take you all the way to where you need to be where you're not going to get really beat up one day yeah. if you make a big mistake. And these guys get really confident really fast and they get funded and, you know, the next thing you know, you don't hear from them anymore. Yeah. You and, know, so and it's unfortunate. When you say funded, so I, I think we've probably, I mean, there's I think there's a lot of parallels with this with the sports card industry. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say funded, so it's pretty much a young guy that, you know, gets somebody to back them. You know, they get their family because all of a sudden they're making money, mm -hmm. okay? And my whole thing is, you know, look, we've been doing this a little bit. If you can't write your own check for something, you shouldn't buy it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't afford to buy it, don't go out and buy it on speculation, on spec. And it's the same thing in sports cards. I mean, sports cards is really up and down lately. Yeah. I mean, oh, very yeah. up Most, and down. Mostly down. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That usually happens in sports cards. The deal with, like, watches is that people, they love the look, they love to be able to wear it, but they know that it's got value if they need it. And the watches are usually, if someone is down and out, it's the last thing they sell. I mean, usually I'll get the gold, then I'll get the sports cards, then I'll get, you know, I used to sell guitars. I, I, guys are calling me up, oh, you wanna buy this Gibson Les Paul? Oh, I've got a, you know, I've got a burst, I wanna take, I want you to take a look at it, I'm like, oh my God. You know, I mean, I, I was okay with that, but I would always call in somebody who knew more than mm -hmm. me. You know, I, you know, I know my capabilities and limitations. Same yeah. thing with sports cards and sports mem. But, you know, we, we try to keep it 
focused on watches. Every time I kind of skew away from that, it's like I always get beat up. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, let me let me stick with what I do best, you know. And, and you know, specialized knowledge, and, and I'm good at it. So that's what I do. You yeah. know, and it's it's fun. I enjoy it. You know, it's more fun with the guys with the no, boys. No, abso- absolutely. You know, it is. It's a lot of fun now because it's a whole new. It's a whole different feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to see them go out and do certain things. I mean, he's very, you know, aggressive and he's very passive. Mm -hmm. He's more the thinker. He sits back and watches and strategizes. And, you know, he actually, he has a corporate job based in this, in that field also in authentication and stuff like that. He's been around it his whole life and, you know, he was really good at it. He was more, you know, hands-on selling, started in a flea market, you know, worked his ass off as a kid, you know, neither one of them. I mean, look, they didn't grow up, you know, like I grew up, but I didn't grow up terribly. But, mm-hmm. you know, my parents worked. You know what I'm saying? His parents worked. His parents worked. You know, and, and had to go out and make your own money. And that's the name of the game. You have to be able to support yourself. And they, you know, they both have, it's a yin and yang. It's perfect. And I'm over there, like, trying to hold on to both of them. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I have lots of gray hair. But they don't give me any problems other than just strategizing and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Which, and I'm, yeah. I'm very i'm a little ocd if you haven't noticed <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no absolutely well that's well, that's that's beautiful um i have i have ocd as well so i'm but i'm probably on the passive side as well yeah um that that, that would so i am i didn't i never thought about watches mm-hmm. i never even is whether as an investment or as just a piece of jewelry it was like i said i had a gold seiko that was i think 180 dollars and i was like it's nice. I had, I had cool to think watch. about that. It was nice. Listen, I like I like go. I think it was because my dad had a gold Seiko. Nice. And it was just something like, oh, okay, like you know, something like that. Um, but I remember thinking about like, man, am I going to spend one hundred and eighty dollars on a watch? Yeah. And but uh, you know now now I work a bar stool, so I'm you know making a little bit more money mm-hmm. than I was in Florida, and. I'm thinking about, hey, maybe I might want a Rolex, and I don't know mm-hmm. if uh, if that's because I've been watching your videos mm-hmm. or if it's or you know I see a lot of other people with Rolexes. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's uh, or what got me into it, but I'm thinking about maybe I want a Rolex. It's not the worst thing place in the world to put money, mm-hmm. as historically, they have always held their value. Different models come into vogue, and they go out of vogue, but the standard, you know baseline Rolexes always hold their value, always appreciate at least, you know, at the rate of inflation and cost of living and stuff like that. And it sounds, you know, it's like, it it sounds very, you know, uh, you know, MSNB, uh, CNBC type, you know, these guys sitting there, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's true. You know, I mean, if you look back 25 years, I mean, the stuff that was being sold, you know, especially like if you have an eye for buying like vintage stuff, I mean, stuff that was sold in the 70s for a couple hundred dollars can be, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. That's great appreciation as as time goes on. Yeah. And that's what we do. You know, I mean, that's you know my area of expertise that I, you know, help others with that are putting together collections, you know, overseas and here. They need one specific part, one specific you know, case screw, you know, it's just one of these things where they all, you know, they need a bracelet with the right code on it Mm -hmm. or something like that. And they know that I know what I'm looking at. There's a lot of funny stuff out there that's floating around. So I, you know, I provide that service and, you know, I'm fair, you know, but in that game, it's like, there's no such thing as a ceiling for pricing. Yeah. You know, it's like if somebody needs something, you know, and I've got to go out there and pay for it, you know, they understand that but they want it one way or another. They don't care. And they're all, you know, in a position where they can afford to do that kind of stuff. So it, it's it's a win-win for everybody. You know, the trick is, I mean, I always say this, it's like my problem is never selling. I could sell all day long. My problem is buying. Okay. I can't buy enough really? of what I need. And I'm always a buyer. And I'm just completely fixated on buying. I mean, selling is like, I don't even care. You know, it's like we we sell. You know, and the stuff that I sell is normally just watches and, you know, that kind of stuff. But the stuff that I hoard is the good stuff like that. Like I'll buy a watch just for, you know, a dial or a Mm -hmm. set of hand or a single second hand, you know, that I need for somebody. And I'll take the watch apart. I'll put it, you know, I'll make it period correct because if I need something on it, 
you know, it's usually not period correct. I'll make it period correct for the most part, and I'll just move it along. Yeah. You know, and I'll sell it to other dealers and let them deal with it. And period correct meaning you're going to put on the watch what should have yeah, been, what what been. been on the watch Absolutely. when it first was sold. Yes. A lot of times people don't care. They would rather have a price point. Hmm. And if they tell me that, I'll be like, okay, fine. You know, but here I'm in full disclosure, you know, this is not correct. Okay. And, you know, I'll give you a buyback price on it, you know, within reason, within a certain amount of time, a year, two years, as long as you don't run it over with a truck, I'll always honor it, you know, unless there is some absolute ridiculous, you know, like depression or something <laughs> like that. In which case, I mean, many times I've just honored my buybacks because it's just, you know, it's just sometimes it's what you have to do in business. And you keep people happy and they keep coming back. I have customers that call me, I haven't heard from them in 10, 15 years. I'll get a phone call, it's like, Buckley, I need this. You're the yeah. only guy that's gonna get it for me. I'll be like, where the hell have you been the last 15 years? They're like, oh, here, I've got, my kids are in college, mm -hmm. or, you know, oh, I'm married, oh, I'm divorced. And, you know, we, it, it, it's a nice community. It's yeah. a great community of, of people, you know? It's great until somebody gets overextended, mm -hmm. or, you know, there's a lot of substance abuse and there's a lot of gambling yeah. and that kind of stuff in this field. Which, which comes with... It comes with it. It comes with it. It yeah. really does. And it's not, you know, there's nothing you could really do or say about it. You know, you just, you know... You it's just, just part, keep, it's part of the system. It's part of the game. I mean, yeah. you, you know, sports cards, same yeah. thing. Oh, I mean, guys are up in the room. I mean, we do shows. Those boys from Texas are up there and they're having card games uh, not unlike the ones you see on TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're over there liquid, throwing yeah. down money. And, you know, God bless them. You know, they could afford to do it. You know, and then you get the guys that do the show circuit and, you know, they get away from their wives and they, you know, they do whatever. Yeah. Listen, different strokes. You yeah, know, different for sure. strokes. You know, and it is what it is. And so, and so I think I've heard uh, Chop Shop. Is that kind of a, like a... a a, that's what I did. A legal, legal chop shop. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's as far as breaking everything apart mm -hmm. and that's selling the parts and everything. Um, and so that's what you, mainly what you've been doing. But you're... Yeah. That's what I'm known for. That's what you're known that's for. That's what I'm known for. I'm known for... A, I'm, I'm a parts... I mean, look, I'm a watch dealer, obviously. Mm -hmm. But my specialty, my area of expertise is understanding parts. And the parts... I, when I buy a watch, it's like somebody will come, like guys came... People came to me today. Well, I went to people I needed watches. I look at the watch and they give me a price on it. I look at the sum of the parts and what I can use. I bought a watch off a young lady um, today, it'll probably be on the video, that I wanted the face because I knew the face was, you know, a good face. It's an expensive face. I've got a bunch of them, but you know what? I know pricing right now is a little soft. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? Let me just make her a fair offer on it. You know, we haggled a little bit and then I paid her a little more than I should have, but I know that I could use the parts. You know, and the watch was really nice. There were certain characteristics that I look for, like, you know, certain oxidation means that something hasn't been over polished in a long time, or so this one wasn't polished at all. It still had the case sticker on the back. It was a really nice watch. And I thought I paid all the money for it, but, you know, in retrospect, I say to myself, you know what, so what? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'll pay a little extra. I mean, I didn't pay that much over, you know, maybe a couple of points over. But so what? Yeah. You know, it, I'd rather get it. Then mm -hmm. not get it. Yeah, you, you have know? it because you know you're eventually yeah. you're gonna get a you're gonna get a buyer. I leave things in a box, and somebody will call me on it. And I had a I had a guy from TikTok called me up. I had I had a diamond a diamond bezel, uh, an original one, a factory one from early two thousands, which is not an easy thing to get. And the guy calls me. He's like, "Hi, I'm so and so. You know, I'm down here, and I think he was down in either." Mississippi or Alabama, right down there. And uh, he's like, I, someone told me that you would have this. I was like, yeah, I do. He sends me a picture of a watch that he bought. And I was like, well, okay, this will be perfect for it. He's like, you know what? My wife is gonna go crazy. Uh, I'll send you a wire. I was like, okay, no problem. And I shipped it out the next day. And I, I mean, I made a very good profit on it because I, I paid a lot for it. But if you had to go to Rolex for it, you're gonna pay four or five times what I paid for it. Through you know, like the and, service. And service. And you're not going to be able to get it. They're not going to sell it to you. That's the other thing. That's okay. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Because so as someone who, if I walk into a hobby store like a card shop, I can buy a sports card, no problem. Yes. Walking, I've, I, again, I haven't gotten, I haven't uh, dove too deep into it, but I keep, I keep say, uh, being told, I keep hearing that if I walk into a Rolex dealer today, mm -hmm. I will not get a watch. No. 
You won't. And I, and I hear that guy, even like Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, he says, listen, if you walk into a Rolex store today, uh, it's going to take six months, a year, two years. to. You're get not going to get it. So if they have the Rolexes and I have the money, okay, why can't I get it? I'll tell you why. Okay. Certain dealers, okay, they have a client list that they are not going to, they're not going to go against them. These are people, they either have, like New York, they have them all for celebrities and high rollers. You're not going to be able to get anything from New York. The smaller dealerships in, you know, different areas, either they're going to sell it to gray market dealers, which they're not allowed to do, Hmm. or they have jewelry and other things in their store that you have to go in there and spend usually six figures in order to purchase a watch that's desirable. They'll sell you one that's not, Mm -hmm. which you could probably buy cheaper from me. Yeah. But the ones that are desirable are unattainable for the regular guy. I can't. I've been on a waiting list since 1996. Really? Yeah. And I know all the dealers and they know what I do and I don't even I never put them in a position. I mean, I, if mm-hmm. I buy something from a dealer and I have like certain while like I bought different brands from my authorized dealers and I never sell them. Like my son, I, he wanted a Cartier. I mean, Tyler went and bought himself, uh, you know, a Rolex from his dealer um, in Jersey. And you don't sell them. You don't do that to a dealer because if the dealer finds out, they get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And you don't want to put them in that position. I, they, I know there are a lot of dealers that, that play the gray market game and, you know, that's fine. But Rolex right now is a very, very... They are a very funny company to work with yeah. because they take no prisoners. If they find out, they will hit you. They want you to do a build out for five million dollars. If you don't want to do it, goodbye. You lose really? your account, and that's and you're done. That's your business. That's your business. You know, for the most part. And so it. So when they, it's not necessarily the dealer saying, "I'm not going to sell this mm-hmm. to you." It's that there could be on the Rolex could come down on them. Oh yeah. And so it's so it's. So they have to make their markups. Rolex gives them a certain amount of watches every year. Or, uh, so let's just call it every year. Mm-hmm. And they have a certain margin that they get. I think it's like 35%, 37% markup. They get a certain number of the big, good-selling ones. And then they get a whole bunch of junk. Mm-hmm. Not junk, but the unpopular models. Yeah. The ones that sit. The ones that if you go into Tourneau, you'll see them. One or two of them are ladies with no date or some of these other ones that are just not popular. And Rolex doesn't care. They want all Rolex boutiques to be Rolex boutique. They don't like the independent dealers anymore. And they've been shutting them down regularly for the past 10 years. Really? They've been just pulling their, their accounts. And the big problem also is service. It used to be that certain watchmakers would be able to get a parts account with Rolex. Now it's almost impossible. And that's why I hoard stuff like that. Yeah. Like crystals, uh, hands. This, I, I just hoard it. When I can buy it, I buy it. And, you know, I was just told that a certain, you know, parts account was just, you know, canceled. The local parts account of people that we deal with. And I was like, wow, that's not good. You know, so it, it's very difficult. They want you to bring the stuff to them. It takes six months to get done sometimes. I mean, I, I you know. I've brought watches into service, you know, because uh, I just needed certain things done. And I I don't fool around with that. It's like, let them do it. They're going to charge me through the nose. But it comes back and it's right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I could do it right also. But I like to have the documentation. Mm -hmm. They do it a certain way, you know. And it's like, okay, no problem. You know, and they charge you for it. I mean, listen, we charge a good amount of money for service. I don't like getting in the service business because you get some people who are just a little bit unrealistic when it comes to you know, timing and things like that. And, you know, maybe their their body rhythms are just not in tune with the watch. I, I mean, you know, I mean, there's a million different reasons why a watch is going to be off by, you know, three seconds a day, five seconds a day, a million different reasons. And sometimes people don't want to hear that. They're like, well, I spent $10,000 on a watch and it better keep time. I was like, listen, <laughs> you know what? Then you got to get a watch with a battery, get a quartz watch. And you're never <laughs> going to worry about it. And even that's going to lose a little bit every once in a while. Yeah. But people, you know, for the most part, the customers these days are not as, how can I say it? They're not as neurotic mm-hmm. about that because they're buying into the brand and yeah. the hype, you know, and they want to be a part of it. And that's why you get a lot of these new dealers and the ones that you'll see on TikTok that are sitting there doing a lot of our shtick. Mm-hmm. I mean, he started the shtick, you know, the, the day in the life of, a, you know, he was 21 years old or 20 years old he started, he started doing it. So at 21 years old, he went on TikTok and he was doing the filming, he was doing the running around. And 
we came up with this this formula. You know, it was like, okay, let's show the 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 real nitty gritty of this mm -hmm. stuff. And let me tell you something. I've always been one to like be forthcoming with information. I've had a lot of problems over the years with other dealers and auction houses and stuff like that because they don't like people knowing what stuff really costs mm -hmm. because they're looking for their crazy markups. Yeah. I mean, what we do on the other hand is like, you know, you're going to buy something for 10,000. Listen, I'll buy back for 9,200 anytime you want. And you know your exposure, you're good to go. You know, if in six months the thing is, you know, I have guys, they, they buy brand new watches and, you know, I'll give them a buyback on it. They'll call me back, John, I, I you know, um, I, I, my tax bill is up or something's going on. Yeah. I need to return. I'm like, all right, return it. No problem. It's okay. And that keeps people coming back and it keeps them comfortable in that they're not getting hosed. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to a lot of these other dealers, they are not, I'm not going to say a lot of the other dealers. There are certain dealers that play the retail game with regular customers. And I deal wholesale, you know, to other dealers for the most part. But every once in a while, I'll get somebody that's overseas or, you know, somewhere that needs something. And they're always happy. They always understand that I'm going to make sure that, you know, you're not going to get beat up. You know, if it's something rare and desirable, that's the criteria. It's got to be rare and desirable and vintage. If it's not rare, if it's rare, okay, big deal. Yeah. Desirable, eh, okay, big deal. If it's rare and desirable, you can name your number. Yeah. You know, because there's a hundred guys that want to buy it. And then you just put a price on it and put it on Instagram and, and somebody yeah. calls me. That's what I've been doing for 10 years on Instagram. And there will be somebody oh. willing to pay. My Instagram, before this whole TikTok thing, I always used to say I had like maybe 3,500 followers, but I always would say it's like my Instagram followers, my 3,500 followers are better than guys' accounts with 100,000 because I had the best guys yeah. that were always looking. I, would, I wouldn't even price it. I would just take a picture, put it in my story. I'd get 10 guys. Hey, I want it. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Where is it? Can I look at it? Give me a picture. And people didn't understand that. You know, it's like, oh, you know, you know how come you're not – putting it on a website or doing a retail site, retail sites are a pain in the ass. Yeah. They just are. You know, first of all, you've got to maintain it. Yeah. And we turn stuff over so fast that it, it doesn't pay. No. I have guys offering to build me websites. It's like, oh, can I have a website? And I was like, do you have a website? I'm like, listen, I don't have a website for a reason. I just throw stuff up on Instagram or I'll throw stuff, you know, in my Instagram story. If it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And if I still have it in a couple of weeks, I bring it to New York. I give it to Rafik <laughs> or the boys, and they'll take it out. Like the boys right now are, you know, running around doing videos with this, with that um, Mad Realities right now, mm -hmm. that thing. So it's, you know, it's different. Yeah. So I still have my guys that, you know, buy and sell stuff on the street. Sometimes I actually have to do it myself. It's really, it's, it's, <laughs> it's you know, it, it's not beneath me. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I haven't done it in a long time. But you know what? You send me out there. I'll do it. Yeah. You know, I have no problem with it. This is what I do, you know, and I've been doing it. You know, nice. it's kind of fun. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I, well, just from watching the videos, I think I think so. I'm not even part of it. I, it's, 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 it looks very exciting. So what if, if I wanted to buy a watch, my first watch and everything, yes. uh, I can't go into Rolex. Mm -hmm. or if, and if I do go into Rolex, I'm, why doesn't Rolex just have Rolex dealers? Why do, they, why do they even have authorized dealers if they're so worried about keeping everything in-house why don't they just have a rolex store they do okay they do rolex is a really smart company they understand the hype they really they get it you know and they know how to create like models that are historically desirable mm -hmm. you know i mean rolex daytonas are, are always desirable and they are always in demand and they always distribute less of them than they would a Datejust or even a Submariner. The thing that happened in the last like few years, three, four, five years, is that people couldn't get the Daytonas. So they would start buying the Submariners because the hype was so great. And everybody started buying them up, buying them up. And I would always say to people, listen, this is a mass produced watch. Okay, there are lots of them made. Just because dealers, you know, are buying them up doesn't mean that they're going to be worth, you know. And what happened was, right now, we're seeing a huge dip in a lot of that stuff. I mean, Daytona's are dipping a little too. They were just so overvalued, mm -hmm. and people are like, "Well, you know, what do you do when you have, you know, inventory that's, you know, taking a 10, 20 percent hit?" It's like, well, you know, when the inventory was hot, we were making tons of money on it. Okay, so you look at it like, you know what? I made plenty of profit. 
I'm going to sell it. If I take a little loss, I take a loss. And we turn the, the money back into your bank account and you start writing checks and start buying at a different price point. Yeah. And you don't cry over it. You know, That's I got guys that have game. They have it's the same with sports cards. Mm -hmm. I know guys that have stuff for 20 years. They've been through three or four up and down markets. And they've still got the same inventory sitting in a safe somewhere. Oh, I don't want to sell it. I, don't want to, I can't lose money on it. Oh, it's yeah. not about losing money. And these are like my friends. So yeah, I yeah. always give them shit about it. Excuse my French. But, it's Barstool. You can oh, it's whatever. Barstool. Okay, great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's just kind of interesting. Just the mindset. I'm a fast and loose mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? There's, uh, there's nothing that I can't replace. Okay? If you want it, you could always get it. If you want a rookie Mickey Mantle card. Okay, if you want uh, you know, one of those tobacco cards or anything like that, you can always find it. You just got to pay for it. Yeah. You know, it's always available. You know, there's not very much in the watch game that's just unavailable. And then the auction houses, I mean, I don't want to say anything really bad about the auction houses. It's just some of those price, some of that pricing is based on two guys in a room that want one thing. Mm -hmm. And you get two rich guys in a room and egos start, you know, flying. I've seen very, very, you know, commonplace items go for way more than they should. And yeah. I've seen really nice items not sell or just sell for really low money. And you always wonder about collusion and stuff like that. It doesn't take much. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it. Lord knows I'm not. Yeah. Wait, uh, Lord knows I'm not. But it's the same in sports cards. It's the same in the art world, in the mm -hmm. wine world, cigars, any of that stuff where you've got this insatiable appetite for a certain item. And you, you know, you get two guys that want it. Yeah. And that doesn't set the market. People are like, well, you know, this sold for so much at auction. This is why I need this much. And I was like, well, put it in an auction. You know, <laughs> you, know yeah. you put it in an auction. It's yeah. not like Ken's auctions. Ken's auctions are really good. Yeah. Okay. Ken's auctions have like a month turnaround or a five-week turnaround. Ken pays right off the bat. You know what I mean? I mean, that's why I really enjoyed working with him. The real auction houses, the big ones, those guys, you submit something. They have to hold it. They need to take pictures. If you're not on, you know, on the inside with those guys, which I mean, most of us are. But you know, if you're just a regular guy that's putting something, you got to get you get charged for taking photographs. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not allowed to put a reserve price on it. And you know, it's usually a six month deal. And then the hammer strikes, and you're waiting to get paid. And you know, it, it's a long term commitment. And yeah. a lot of guys play that game. They don't care. Me, uh, I don't have it in me. I like no. fast and loose. Yeah, you don't have the time. Nah, you, you have the time, but not, you don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and so, so again, I'm, uh, I want to buy a Rolex. Okay. I go into the authorized dealer. Mm -hmm. They say, listen, you might work for Dave Porno, but you're not Dave Porno. We're not mm -hmm. selling you this Rolex. How come Dave doesn't make a phone call for you? Oh, well, that's, oh, no, no. I was actually, so funny story, uh, Stu, Stu Finer, who I, okay. th I think you and Stu Finer are pretty much the same exact person okay. as far as just like on all the time, all the energy in the world. Handsome. He, very handsome. Okay, great. Very handsome. Thank you. And, <laughs> and he, he works with his sons. His, okay. his, his sons work with him and everything. And he's just, he's a family guy. And he, Stu will tell you this, he's made $50 million in his life, mm -hmm. but he spent 51 that's it's not how much you make; it's how much you spend, and that's and that's his whole thing. Um, so let's see here. Where I can't remember where I was going with this, but Stu, where was I going with this? I don't know. Stu Portnoy didn't. Oh yeah, call so up Portnoy yeah, so, and okay, say, yeah, "Hey, so, this yeah. is my guy, Doug." So uh, Stu, I was talking before I, I fought in the last rough and rowdy, which is like the Barstool boxing mm -hmm. match, and uh, I was uh, I told Stu, I was like, "Oh, you know, I don't have Dave's number," and Stu said, "Oh, I'll give it to you." And I said, "No, no, no, like I do not want Dave Portnoy's number." If Dave Portnoy has he we follow each other on Twitter. If he needs to get in contact with me, he has my phone number. I don't even want his phone number. I never want it to be said that Doug's like let out his phone number. I don't even it's I don't want it. I don't want it. Uh, so no, you don't. You You're don't a conservative I, man. I, I like that. I, about I you. don't even. I don't. I don't even want the possibility that <sighs> somebody got his number from me. Okay. Um, or, or you know maybe I drink too many. You know. <laughs> Cap Captain Morgan's and you know text okay. him something. I don't. I don't want. I don't. I just don't want to be a part of it. Okay. Um, so yeah. So I'm not Dave Pornoy. I I don't have a hundred thousand to spend. You, mm -hmm. you mentioned that they'll f f basically they're yeah. like you got to buy all this mm -hmm. in order just to buy uh, mm -hmm. the Rolex. Now what the markup you mentioned the markup is like thirty five. I think it's like thirty seven percent. It used to be forty one percent. I think it's gone down. Gotcha. And that and that's from the authorized dealer. That's from the that's authorized so dealer. That's, that's their that's markup. how much they're making. Yeah. And that's normal. So if I basically my options are either wait mm -hmm. 
buy hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry or mm-hmm. go to secondary market. Mm-hmm. What's the, what, besides like the time and everything, the second, if I go to the secondary market, are there new watches on the yeah, secondary of market? Okay. Absolutely. Because you mentioned the, the gray yeah. markets or authorized Absolutely. dealers that are. Well, a lot of times authorized dealers get these kind of deals that, and, and I'm, listen, I've heard rumors, mm-hmm. okay, to yeah. that, to the, to the effect that authorized dealers will sometimes, you know, be able to sell off all of their, you know, unpopular models in order to sell the good models. Mm-hmm. So they'll sell everything off and they'll clean their books and they'll pay their bill with Rolex and Rolex, Rolex knows what's going on. Okay. That's why they're very, very, they're smart. They don't release a lot of the really hot watches because there's always a demand. The demand is always there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to be before you, I mean, it used to be five, six years ago, you could walk into any Rolex dealership and buy a Submariner. You could never just walk in and buy a Daytona unless you, uh, uh, Some. I mean, some guys got lucky. I mean, people get lucky. It's like hitting the lottery or getting a good scratch off, which yeah. I'm not a gambler like that. I flip coins. But you, you either wait or you say, you know what, if I want a new watch, now a lot of the new watches are starting to soften up. And it's funny. I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen with this. You know, I, I really, I, I mean, I love watching this because it, it's, yeah. it's just interesting because I've seen it before and I kind of know where this whole thing is going to go. And like at some point, you're going to be able to walk into a dealership and it's probably going to be within the next two years and buy a brand new Rolex Datejust. You probably will. Okay. I don't know whether or not, you know, it's going to you know, be accurate or come true. But just my feeling, it's not going to be that you're never going to be able to do it again. It's just that you're going to, at some point, have to either pay the dealer and then you're going to have to pay tax and, and all of that. And you're going to pay retail, which retail is not terrible, but sometimes some of these models are below retail, you know, if they're pre-owned and, you know, a year old or something like that. Because a lot of these guys have stuff that's new, but it's been sitting for a year, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just it's just the business nothing wrong with it it's fine you know it's not like a liver or you know a piece of fruit that's going to go bad you know it's a piece of steel with you know some oil in there and some more steel and some precious metals mixed in and they last forever if you take care of them and they're wonderful keepsakes and they're wonderful to pass down to your children yeah and they hold their value if you buy them right or if you just buy them period they hold their value if you're going to hold on to something i always tell guys when they're buying big stuff it's like, listen, I had a guy just recently in the last five years wanted a very specific vintage watch. At the time, the market was on the upswing. I was like, don't do it. He's like, I want it. Don't do it. I want it. <sighs> okay, fine. One came in to one of my guys on 47th Street from a private person. The watch had never hit the market. And guys love that. They yeah. don't want something. Like if somebody posts something all over, puts it on blast, the really, really big players – they get turned off by that. And I understand it. You don't want, you want to be the guy to break it. You know, you're not going to do it on the internet. You're going to go to dinner with your friends and you're going to have it on and they're all going to ooh and ah and they're like, oh my God, how did you find that? And then you'll make up some story or something like that. <laughs> you're not going to say you got it from Buckley. Yeah. You're going to say, well, you know, there was this old man and he had a coffee can and I went in there and I, you know, I paid him, I bought his house. I paid for his uh, kids to go to college and, uh, you know, guys like stories like yeah. that. But it, it's it's just the, the way of the game, you know. It's just with how the game goes. It's it's been like this for a while. Yeah. You know, it's just been like this. And this guy wanted this watch so badly. And I said to him, "Bro, this is a good friend of mine. He had the money. I was like, listen, you're gonna spend this money. It was a six figure deal. I was like, listen, you've got to hold this thing between five and ten years. Okay? Don't flip it because you you're buying at the top of the market." You know, and he would call me up like a guy, you know, like when Jerry Seinfeld was looking at the stock page, you know, he'd be like, oh, my God, it's still down. Oh, my God, it's back up. Uh, No, you can't do that. I was like, you got to hold it. Sure enough, two years in, he calls me up. Wow, I'm doing renovation on a building that I bought and I need the money. I was like, why did you do this? No, I know you told me this. No, you got to get me out of it. I'm like, oh, my God, now it's my problem again. You know, and it's like, I did it. I got him out of it. He didn't lose a lot. He lost a few thousand dollars, but he wore the thing for two and a half years. Yeah. It's like, you know what? When you wear you, something, you leased, it. You, you leased it. You know, it's it's the type of thing where you, you, you used it, okay? And these guys think that it only goes up. 
but it comes down. And what's going to end? Thank God he sold it. Mm-hmm. Thank God. I said to him, I said, listen, you got to get rid of this thing. Because if, you, if you're if you not going to get rid of it now, he's like, oh, I don't want to take that much of a loss. I was like, then what do you want me to do? Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to take a $10,000 loss and buy it off you. No, 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 no. So he consigned it to me, which I usually don't do with people, but he's a good friend of mine. He's like, listen, just take it and sell it. And I found a right home for it. He did well. You know, he lost a few, a couple of thousand dollars, which was really, you know, I could have been much worse. It could have been much worse. Yeah. So that's the story with these things. You know, you can't get too caught up in it. But if you do, you've got to listen to Buckley because Buckley says if you hold the thing for 10 years, it's only going to go up because yeah. that's historically that's what happens. But five years, be careful. And so in it, so historically, the values of these watches go up, mm-hmm. even though they're making new watches every year. Mm-hmm. Is it because the watches are becoming vintage, or what happens with, like with the supply and demand? If they keep making new watches, at a certain point, at a certain point, they're making more watches than there are people, right? Yeah, the vintage market is a totally different market. It's the art market mm-hmm. on your wrist. Yeah, that's what it is. So they're they're not making any more of them. Certain times, you will find something that just pops up out of nowhere. You know, um, there was a watch that just came, just popped up on the market. And the problem is people are so hell-bent on getting the extra few bucks out of it that they'll offer it to like three or four different guys. And what happens is it gets shown all over the place and it gets burned. That's It's basically put on, they're like, no, you can't show, you can't put it on the internet. I was like, look, all right, I'm going to keep the thing in my phone, no problem. But let me tell you something, if I find, a, I, I know... What usually happens is I'll get a phone call and they'll say to me, okay, I didn't show this to anybody else, blah, blah, blah. Hour later, I'll get a phone call from some other dealer. Hey, um, what would you pay for this, this, and that? I was like, well, tell so-and-so <laughs> that, you know, I don't want it now. Yeah. And people get, you know, they start calling you back. No, 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 no. I was just showing somebody. I was like, but I told you not to. Yeah. You know, and if you're going to do it like that, if you want to play that game, that's fine. Put it on the internet and sell it. Put it in an auction. But don't ask me to do that, Mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, we always make peace at the end of the day. And somebody will buy it. And I uh, sometimes I'll get it. Sometimes someone else gets it. It's just how it works. And and why why is that like the – is – because if you're if you were selling a watch, you would want to shop it around. But I think – and I've seen this in your videos. When you're buying a watch, you're, you're buying the seller. Absolutely. And so is it the same way the other way around? Like you got to tr- you got to trust who you have to trust who you're dealing with. Well, uh, you know, modern stuff, I mean, vintage stuff is a different animal. It's a totally different market. It's a totally different dynamic. I mean, modern stuff that you guys see me, you know, buying and selling, those are, I'm just filling orders for the most part. Every once in a while I'll stock stuff like uh, don't ask me what's over there. Oh my god, don't ask me why. Because I'm an idiot. I'm not an idiot. Oh, sometimes I am. But sometimes I just have a feeling about stuff. And when stuff is at the right price, I just buy it. To have inventory. You know, just to have it. You know, or I'm going to take the dial out like that watch. You know, yeah. It's like, okay, so I spent 15 grand to be able to do that. Okay, if I do that three, four times a day, you know, I don't do it that often. But sometimes I'll just do it because it, it looks like it's worth it to me. I have a good eye when it comes to that. I know I could utilize it. And... You just, uh, the the modern stuff, it's always available. Again, it's a price point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a price point. Vintage stuff, totally different animal. You know, completely different. The auctions um, just went off, I think, last week in Switzerland. And, again, you get two guys in a room, you know, and stuff, stuff was a little less on some ends, a little more on others. And a lot of stuff didn't really do very well, you know, because guys are smart. These yeah. vintage guys are very smart. They know if it fails at auction, that piece is going to show up somewhere. It's going to show up on my desk. It'll show up in New York. It'll show up in Switzerland. It'll show up in Italy. And you you just try your best to kind of navigate and you don't overextend. You know, that's a trick. You know, yeah. a lot of these auction guys, you know, they, sometimes they get a little time to pay. You know what I mean? Which is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I don't like that that forum that that area that yeah. space it's not i don't know it's just not fast enough for me i would be at every auction i mean 10 years ago i'd be at every auction you know with a paddle and you know buying or selling or this and that it's just i don't know it's just too much it's too much hype right now Got it. you know too many pe- and too many people that are it's a lot of corporate it's like real estate in new mm-hmm. york i'm into real estate yeah yeah and it's all corporate 
Is you know, BlackRock buying up all the Rolexes? I don't know if BlackRock is, but you get but guys that that, that, that put themselves together with other guys, and they'll buy stuff, and they'll spend a lot of money on it. And then, you know, they'll uh, – not fractionals, but they'll uh, – like, what is the company? Rally. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. I remember when they were first starting out, and I was like, who in their right mind is going to do this? You know, it's like it, it made no sense to me. But a lot of folks just want a piece of the action. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how it's doing. I hope it's doing well. I never wish bad on any company. But it didn't make sense to me that you were going to get a guy to buy into a rookie mantle card or a, a first gen uh, Steph Curry yeah. or, you know, whatever. It's it's just not you know uh, I don't know it's not it, it, it's an alternative investment I get it and I'm the king of alternative investments over here but watches have been tried and true for a long time yeah. that kind of fractional like investment is very risky yeah very risky you know you, I don't I don't like a, risk you, like you, that you get a lot of people paying a little bit of money yeah and it it's a it's a false price the mm-hmm. whatever they pay for it. It, it's not what one person with that amount of money would pay for it. Yeah. And it, 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 it gets diluted. That's the problem. You know? And then when it drops, it's like crypto. Yeah. You know? Please. I've oh, got, yeah. I've oh, got yeah. bruises all over me from crypto. <laughs> well, that's have you heard about uh, FTX? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I was were. up last week. Oh, yeah? I, uh, no, I wasn't. Uh, I haven't been up in years. Yeah, yeah. But I was almost like break even. I was like down like maybe 4 10%. Five percent. I don't even know because I barely look at it. Then I look this morning. And I'm like, huh? What the hell happened? Why didn't I sell off some of this stuff? But it's it, for me. It's a long term play. Mm-hmm. It's just I just throw money in every month or every week or whenever. I, I don't even know when I do it. My son yeah. got me into it, and it's like, you know what? Okay, uh, the kids are doing it. It's got to have some merit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it has to. <laughs> well, and so and so you you mentioned watch. So watches pretty much at least hold their value. Yeah, they do. Now, so when we when we make a big jump from you mentioned like a from a Submariner to a Daytona, mm-hmm. I'm I'm using those words just because you've said okay. them. I have no idea what they. You reference, are okay using them. I'm, you sound I'm, great. Okay, perfect. Um, so, is there a big difference between? Is it just a style, or is there something within the watch that make what makes the huge jump from a five thousand dollar watch to a fifty thousand dollar watch? It's got nothing to do with the materials or the workmanship or anything. It's got to do with the legend gotcha it's got to do with that little something that and the availability the lack of availability Mm -hmm. i mean listen i've bought and sold submariners that you know sold for you know two or three hundred dollars that are two and three three hundred thousand dollars you know i mean happens you know and they've got to be beautiful you know and they're fantastic and i used to wear these watches when they were you know 100 grand 80 grand like that i don't do it anymore you know, I just don't have it in me to wear them. I, I used to. I, you know, I have pictures on vacation with crazy watches that, you know, it, that was the thing. In your, you know what? How old are you again? 34. Okay. When you get to your 40s, okay, you get to this point in your ego that you have arrived, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you have some, sem- some little bit of success, okay? What happens in your 40s is you start – feeding into that hype and feeding into that ego trip and sometimes you feed into it and everything is all good and then all of a sudden you get hit over the head and humility comes in and you've got to get real humble real fast and that didn't happen with the watches with me it was just i had it felt like i had been there and done that with a lot of stuff and i still know guys they walk around you know with crazy stuff on their wrist i don't even know why they do it i'm like are you nuts you know i mean I, I, I don't know. It's like from an insurance and a li- – it's more like a liability thing mm-hmm. for me. It's like I don't want somebody to come over there and hit me over the head yeah. you know, to take my watch. I don't want to have to defend that. You know, It's just not what I want to do. And these other guys are still on that upswing. Mm-hmm. They're still caught up in that – You know, I'm in my 50s, my late 50s. I'm going into my 60s in, two, in a year and a half. And I've kind of come to terms with who I am, what I do, what I'm all about, you know. And, again, I don't want to set the wrong example for them, you know. I just don't. I mean, and they've got their own likes and dislikes and they've got their own hype beast ways about them. But they're young and they're entitled. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in your 20s, it's like it's great. But they don't do anything stupid. 
You know, you can't, you know, like, he likes to go to AC, you know, he likes to go out to dinner and stuff like that. It's like, don't go out there wearing anything crazy. Yeah. Especially now with all of this, you know, the spotlight is on you. I mean, people stop us, you yeah. know, in the streets. And we don't, you know, we don't realize how much exposure you're pulling, you know. I mean, it makes me nervous for them. I, you know, I, it I makes me nervous. I understand that. I, I go to Mets games with Frank. I'm not sure if you know Frank the Tank. Um Everybody knows Frank, especially at Mets games, yeah. and he's not wearing a hundred thousand dollar watch, yeah, and smart. he gets stopped all the time. So mm-hmm. I, I understand that. Well, I don't want to take up too much. I have a couple other questions. You can I ask want me to anything you like. Okay, good deal. I came here. Okay, good. came here for you. It's okay. You've seen uncut gems? No, you've never seen uncut gems. Okay, you've seen. Un- no. I have not. No, okay. Buckley, have I seen uncut gems? No. Not Mikorski, have I seen uncut gems? No. See. Why? Okay, I'll. Explain. So you get it all the time. Here's the Uncut Gems story. All right. Okay? I'm going to give you the story. I hope so. Right? And it's okay. All right? And it's fine. And I'm not going to put anybody, you know, in any legal harm. We're right? not using any names. Oh, I can, but I won't. Okay. I'll be nice. <laughs> Early on, the producers were friends with a very close friend of mine, okay, named Carl Cohen, who is watch dealer and, you know, fourth generation watch dealer. I mean, OG watch dealer. Okay. Younger guy than me, but came from a family of authorized dealers and, you know, just a gemologist. I mean, just a, an absolute mensch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Being that we're talking about Uncut Gems. So he knew the producers. I'm not going to say that there was any, any, like, how can I put it? They didn't write that about me, mm-hmm. but the similarities were just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, really unbelievable. It was this guy that's on 47th Street, gambled. I'm not a gambler. I'm a winner, okay? <laughs> I'm a winner, yeah. okay? I don't lose in gambling. I, you know, I should come over here and handicap. I am one of the yeah, yeah. best. I pick winners, and I never lose in a coin flip. I've done coin flips <sighs> 10, 12 years, and if I've lost five times, in those 10 years, buck, five times yeah. in those 10 years, it's a lot, okay? I always win coin flips. And we're talking money on coin flips. Yeah. We, we flip coins for, you You're talking you know, about if you're making a deal for a watch. Yeah, and, you, you can't, and there's a difference. Let's split the middle. Yeah, let's we're just, okay, flip. let's flip for 200, 1,000, 1,500, 1,700. We flip for, I never lose, okay? I collect sports rings, okay? You can talk to Ken about that, yeah, yeah. all right? I've sold them with him and I've bought them with him. Okay, and I like good stuff. And it's just interesting that the producers called me and they wanted to use Tuscany Rose, my company name, in the movie. And I thought I was going to be the guy that did the deal with um, KG. But the problem was our booth had a very low ceiling. And, you know, they wanted to do it in a big exchange. And I was like, I don't care. You're going to use my company name. That's fine. I signed the release. They used the name. I want the sign, I said. Okay, because the sign was really cool. Yeah. And we're like kind of low budget guys. Like we don't, we don't play that, you know, that highfalutin uh, stuff. We're like gorilla. We've always been like that. And I never got the sign. And I'm really upset over it. Really? So that's why I never watched the movie. That's fair. In addition, okay, people say to me, they're like, oh, you look like Sandler's father. And no hate on Sandler. I really like Sandler. Yeah. I think Sandler's a very underrated actor. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, yeah, I sure. think he's really underrated. He's a, he's a Brooklyn guy, which I am too. But it's like, bro, he's like my age. He's like yeah. a year or two, maybe a year younger or a year. I don't even know how old he is, but I know he's in his late 50s. Yeah. It's like, come on, guys. Really? It's like, I don't dye my hair. Maybe that's it. You know, but if I dye yeah. my hair, I'd look much younger. Yeah, but I can see that. That's the Uncut gem story. And, you know, we were there when they shot. I mean, the producers were very nice guys. I, and, and I had, you know, no real, you know, issue with them. We do it more so as a goof. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what? I'm going to sue them because they're using my likeness. I'll tell yeah, people yeah. that. And they'll be like, and they'll be like, oh, what are you talking about? And then I'll show them the contract that I signed. Like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you actually were. Yeah, yeah that was, that I got was the con- It's in my phone. I, I, I got I, it. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that. See, look at this. We're breaking news over yeah. here at Barstool. Look at that. So that. And so there's, it's known yeah. that, that, I mean, Adam Sandler's character is pretty much you. I don't to know to if an it, extent. I don't know if the, it, it started the, the out man, like the that. The mannerisms, maybe? Yeah. Well, I was doing it first. No, absolutely. I was doing it first. I've been doing this for a long time. Sandler came in. He's an actor. He's a good actor. Yeah. You know? And he... I don't know. I never saw the movie. And one of these days... 
I, you know what else I never saw? I never saw the Sopranos thing either. That that sequel oh, yeah, thing. Saints I never saw that. He won't yeah. let me. He's see, like, no, you can't one. do it. It's terrible. It's like Godfather Three. I forbid my children yeah, to yeah. watch Godfather Three. I'm no bad. hate, but you know, Fair it's just funny. It, it, it's it's one of those things where you know it's 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 a talking point. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's yeah. funny, but the similarities are very very interesting. I that's know? I mean wa- watching watching you make the deals and everything. Obviously, he, he is a. Uh, uh, we use the we're a gambling company. We're owned by a casino, so we can't use the D word. Right. Uh, but he's obviously that you know type of gambler. Um, okay, so we'll, we will go there. We'll, 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 we'll leave it. <laughs> Don't at that. get in trouble now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, you want that watch? You want yeah, Dave yeah. to give that make that yeah, phone call yeah. after this interview? Um, so that so but um, I have heard there is a Buckley dial. Yes. So can you explain that to me? So like there is a dial. It's just like is that yes. the nomenclature that yes. it's named after you? Yes. And you know who named it? Who? Me. That's fair. <laughs> In a raging, egomaniacal fit. That's how it I works. raged. I just did it. And it was uh, the story's all over the internet. Um, many years ago, uh, a certain singer songwriter who, you know, it's John Mayer, was into watches and he was coming on the scene and he came onto our forum and he was a sweet guy. I sold him a watch. He, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a really nice guy. And, and no, nothing against him. I, I, I have nothing against that man. Um, and some of the other guys in the groups, you know, my peers, were like, well, you know, John, you know, we should call this a John Mayer down. I went freaking berserk. I went berserk. Okay, I was just uh, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It just rubbed me the wrong way. And I said, you know, these were these really unpopular dials. And nobody liked them. So I was like, you know what? This is the Buckley dial. And it stuck. Really? And it's like, you can go on Craigslist in, in Jakarta, okay, <laughs> and post or eBay in Timbuktu in Guam. And you could put Buckley dial in and somebody will be selling it. Yeah. And it's just really cool. That is. I just love it. And you, you got you to gotta take what's yours. You know, it's funny. Everybody knows it, but every once in a while you get somebody who doesn't know it, and they're like, oh, John Buckley, yeah, you know, yeah, did you know that they have? I was like, really? Wow, no kidding. Holy cow. <laughs> I'll walk into a deal, like a, like if I'm like traveling, and I go into a you know place and they have, you know, dialed, you know, wa- used watches, I'll mm-hmm. go over and I'll see a Buckley. I was like, oh, may I see that? They're like, well, you know, this is supposedly named after, a, you know, a New York City um, watch. I was going to say drug dealer. Oh my god! What am I thinking? <laughs> a watch dealer, and uh, it's like you just sit there and you're like, yeah, okay. And then I'll like, you know, I'll be like, oh well, you know, I'll pull up my credit card. It has the company name and my name on it. Yeah, be yeah. Like they'll be like, oh wow, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. No problem. <laughs> well, you're, you're going to be you're going to be getting a lot more of that with TikTok and everything. Yeah. Um, as that grows, we talked about it earlier. You know, people you know, doing deals and it kind of looks a little staged or anything. <laughs> um, but at the same time, there's, there's a lot of people love the, the realness of it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially and y'all are just doing what you're normally doing anyway. This is what we you're do. just recording it. Yeah. It's just on video. Have y'all, have y'all been approached by like, Hey, you know, we might want to do like a storage. We wars are, or something like that. we have been approached for the last month really by a couple of different companies. And oddly enough, Yesterday, random phone call came in from a person who was looking for a watch, and I'm not going to mention. I'm not going to mention the names because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I don't think it's good to do that. Mm-hmm. But with already has a show, and we just got to talking, and I was like, you know, did you use a broker? When, you know, because my whole thing is, uh, look, I bought and sold real estate for years, okay? I never signed an exclusive Mm -hmm. on real estate to sell real estate. Yeah, an exclusive listing. Yeah. Yeah. And they want us to sign an an exclusive on this. And it's a six to 12 month deal. And we're doing this thing with Mad Realities, which, you know, we did that on a handshake, okay? Before, and he had 25,000 followers. I I wasn't even on TikTok when we started. I was playing softball, doing videos for him. You know, with the watches, you know, playing ball in my watches and stuff like that, just to just for the hell of it. Yeah. And we got to talking, and he was like, "Oh, I had a show here, you know, in this, you know, he's he's international." And he's like, "Oh yeah, well, you know, I'm very good friends with this person. You know what? Maybe you know." I was like, "You want to do? Want to be the producer? You know?" He's like, "You know what? Let's go." And I think he's flying in. I think Monday, and we're supposedly gonna you know speak with 
certain people that we're just going to, you know, shoot a pilot and see how it goes. Very I mean, cool. however it goes, it goes. You yeah. know, I, I mean, it's not something that's, you know, so, I mean, we, we were approached many years ago by companies to do this, and I always turned it down because we didn't really want to give that inside look. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like, there's no such thing as off limits with this. So if anyone's going to do it, I'm going to do it because I'll do it right. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to do it straight and I'm going to be honest about it. And again, you know, you get a little pushback from some of the other players. And it's like, hey, man, you know, they came to me. And they're all, and the funny thing about it is all the ones that were like goofing on me when I started up on TikTok, oh, you're going to have 15 year olds. Uh, it's like, they're all starting out now. Yeah. And they're like way behind. Way behind. Way behind. They I mean, they, they, they missed they the won't boat. They're not going to catch up. They're not going to catch up. No. And we just, you know, we said, you know what? If we're going to do it, let's do it. Let's be true to ourselves, okay? Which is really important to me. You know, I mean, people know me, you know? I mean, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm known in the community, in my community. I'm known on 47th Street. I can't be full of crap. No. You know, I can't. So it's like, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it right, the way I've done things, you know, in this business and in life. And we'll see what happens. You know, if they want to do a show about it, great. If they don't want to do a show about it, you know what? We have, we started, since TikTok, we had to put together, we are getting so many requests. And you were mentioning this at the beginning of people that want to buy from us. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not set up for that, you know. I mean, so I said to them, we started a Telegram group. And we charge people. I mean, there are. I mean, you're not a watch guy in, in that regard, like a dealer type, like into that whole thing. But I pay personally. I pay thousands of dollars a year to be in very specific chat groups mm -hmm. with very specific people. Yeah, you know, it's a and net, like a networking. Group. It's a networking group, yeah. and they charge. You know, I mean, thousands. So we put together something that's gonna, that's really really great, and I think it is. Um, we put together a telegram group with veteran dealers that I handpicked, okay, and Tyler and James. Mm -hmm. we, we picked the people that we trust, people that if someone, you made a phone call to me and you said, John, I need a Submariner and I don't have one in stock, I'm going to call somebody in that group. So I said, you know what, 20 bucks a month, you come in, if you just want to buy a watch, pay 20 bucks and leave, more power to you. Utilize it that way. Yeah. But I can't find it for you because I'm inundated yeah. and uh, the boys can't do it either no. because it, it's it's just it's hard dealing with somebody who wants something they want mm -hmm. you know I'm a wholesale guy it's like I'll buy 10 watches off you or sell you 10 watches really easy you know yeah. I'll write it write me a check or write a check send me a wire no problem but this is something different and we started it about a month ago Friday is gonna be four weeks that we started it and we're we're already you know we're we've got 700 people in the group you know and we're probably going to max out at about 2,000 people. And once we get to over 1,000 people, we're going to start either filtering it onto a website or start breaking it up so that there's a lot more interaction in certain things. We're doing new guy questions. We're doing, you know, legit checks, which no other group did. Yeah. You know, nobody wanted to be bothered with that. To see if they'll watch is authentic. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to say, if you send a picture, nine times out of ten, you could spot it from across the street. The other times, you got to send more detailed pictures. And we will identify it. And we will do our best. And if you're local to one of our members, we'll send you over there and you could check it out. Yeah. And buying and selling and learning how to do the business. You know, learning what the business is all about from guys who... I said to them, I was like, they really, you know, in the beginning, it was like, oh, my God, these guys were asking. I'm like, listen, that's why you're in the group. Okay, if you don't want to be in the group, that's fine. I'll, I'll find somebody else because yeah, yeah. there's only a certain amount of spots for dealers in that group. Yeah. And it's turned out really well. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we've run successful chat groups for money before. Okay, we, we have a very successful dealer-only chat group. And, you know, these guys are like, oh, my God, could we be in the group? I'm like, no, 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 no. Stay here. You got to have a tax ID to be in that other group. Yeah, if you're yeah. just buying off somebody, most of my dealers that are in that group are set up for retail, and there are different laws for different states. There are tax um, regulations and mm -hmm. things like that, and they're all you know privy to that. Yeah. And they do it the right way. And what's going on now is people are you know we're not putting it on blast, but every day we'll go on TikTok. I'll ask first thing I ask when I'm on TikTok live six o'clock in the morning every day I'm on live, and it's like. 
anybody have a problem in the chat group. If you have a problem, we are transparent, let me know. Yeah. And we get guys, oh, it's great. Oh, it's this. If you've got a problem, you let me know. And you let me know live so that everybody can see it. Yeah, yeah. We're not hiding it's anything. Transparent. It's 20 bucks, okay? I pay hundreds a month in other groups. Yeah. And I think it's a fair price for what we've got to do managing it. Yeah. You know, it's not easy because what winds up happening is everybody wants to contact me. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. They want but you I tell them, yeah. yeah, and which is fine. And a lot of times I answer those questions. I still answer questions just on Instagram when people send me a random question. Oh, is this real? Or is, if I'm up and I, you know, and I just catch it, I do. But I've got so many unread messages. And I tell people, listen, go in the group. It's 20 bucks, okay? If it's not worth 20 bucks to you, Okay, to either do a legit check or to find the watch that you want. I promise you, you'll find it in yeah. that group. And then I don't know what to tell you. You know, you want me to spin my wheels over here, okay? My time is worth a lot more than 20 bucks. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not saying that to be a jerk. No. It's like, I have a certain amount of hours in the day. I have a wife, I have a son, I have a business, you know, I have all of this stuff. I have property, I'm sorry, I have property that I manage and it's like, I've got to, you know, I've got to have some other way to solve people's watch problems. Yeah. You know, if it's something I could do and I've got it, great. You know, here. Okay, but most of the time it's like go to the group. You'll love it. And I think out of how many people do we have in there now, Mick? 740. 740. Okay, yeah. it's gone up. In the month, I think maybe four or five people have opted out. And we're like, listen, you opt out, we'll give you your money back. Okay, if you try it, you don't like it, take your money back. It's fine. No problem. You know, we don't want you there if you don't want to be there. And if you want to come back in at another time, great. Let yeah. us know. We'll put you back in. You know, we have no problems with it. Thank knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it's only a month. So we'll see. But we built this thing and it's generating some good money. It's passive income, which pays for a lot of the expenses that normally, like, uh, you know, me as the, the oldest guy in the room, the old man. Um, yeah, that's what he called me twice. And I'm very upset over it. Um, you know, we have a lot of expenses. I mean, yeah. right now it's like, it, it's, it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but you've got to pay people to manage that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to pay people if the, if the page is having problems or, or the, um, the conduit is not clicking. People want to know because they put their credit card in. Hey, Buckley, you know, how come I'm not in the group? Okay, Tyler wakes up at seven in the morning every day and starts entering people into the group. Yeah. Sometimes it, it, it's not seamless. So we've got to make sure that everything is right. We've got to call up our, our people that are in charge of that stuff. And, you know, you got to pay them. So we make some money off of it, which we're entitled to because sure. this is still America and we're allowed to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. Yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah. Elvis when it comes to that. I don't yeah. talk that kind of stuff. But it's the truth. And it, it's going really well, you know. And we keep a link in our bio on TikTok and Linktree. And you'll see Telegram group. You know, if you know, you know. And you click on that and you know, it'll take you through and you'll put your credit card in. It'll hit you for 20 bucks. If you're in there for a week or two and you don't like it, you text me, which everybody you know, texts me anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no problem. Give me the last four, we'll pull you out and it's all good to go. We'll yeah. give you your money back. Really? Yeah. And we don't have any issues like yeah. that. These guys are new guys. I mean, George is in the group. George is our friend. And people, you know, people love it, you know? Yeah. And he's a dealer, He, you know, he's, you know, he does it on the side, but he's a dealer, you know, and you're making money in the group. See? Very well. There you there go. There you go. And so for someone like myself, mm -hmm. not knowing anything, mm -hmm. would you recommend that I go ahead and join the group? I'll comp you because I like you. Well, no, I, well, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. See, you don't have to worry about my number, okay? You're, yeah. You can be in the bar or something like that, and you can call up Buckley anytime. I, Never a problem. You I, can always get a Rolex from me. You never have to worry about it. You can tell Dave it's okay. You got Buckley. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. Of course. Um, but so for but for anyone who is is new into the watch game, or, or maybe they're, they're not new, but they want those connections. Oh, yeah. It's a great networking group. Let me tell you something. We've got dealers in there that have been dealers before me. I, I handpicked these people. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are our network. He's got a lot of young dealers that he deals with. I've got a lot of the OG dealers that we've dealt with and a lot of crossover. And we put them all in the group. And a lot of them came from our dealer only chat. And I made an announcement. And I was like, listen, we're starting this group. If you guys want to be in, we will put you in. If it's not for you, it's not for you. And some of them, you know, you don't see them. They're always watching. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But they don't really participate. And that's okay. You know, as long as they're there, you know, there's always someone that's going to 
interject something really important like tax information or something like that. When somebody asks that, we've got CPAs, we've got attorneys, we've got prosecutors, we've got police officers, we've got all kinds of people in nice. that group. And it, it's a great networking thing. And I'm not selling it. It's it, it's like, it sounds like I'm selling it, but I'm really not. It's like, it's really well, there. it's going to get capped. It's, it's going to get capped. Yeah. And it's providing a really necessary service and there's accountability in the group, okay? I make sure that, you know, if something goes wrong, okay, I'm gonna, you know, hold somebody's feet to the fire and they're gonna make good on it, especially if it's, uh, you know, a lot of new dealers are in there too. You know, they pay their fee and they, they, you know, they're learning about the game. You know, they're maybe a couple of years in, but there's a way to do business and you've gotta do it my way, mm -hmm. okay? And most of the guys, the OG guys, I do it their way. You know, and that's how we do it. You do it right. You don't yeah. do it, you know, you don't play catch me if you can. You describe things accurately. And if you make a mistake, you give a refund. That's what you do. Now, what happens is, you know, people think that a refund is, you know, a three-day trial. You mm -hmm. know, and you've got to differentiate. Yeah. You've got to get in there and really kind of like pick that apart sometimes. And if people do that, it's like, okay, listen, you know what? If you think that you're going to, you know, buy from one of our guys who we know is selling the right stuff. Oh, well, you know, this, it had a scratch over here. It's like, well, you know, it's a used watch. Yeah. Okay. You have to be realistic. And, you know, we give it a little, we let them slide a little bit. If it happens again, then it's like, you know what? Give me the last four and you can go on your way. I will refund you for the month. No yeah. problem. But give me the last four. It's not for you. There's a million other free groups out there. Yeah. Okay. But. There's not a, there are no free groups that we are running. Yeah. And we run it a certain way. We run it the right way. I've been in forums and groups now for 20 years. We had uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, the watch forums, Vintage Rolex Forum, uh, Time Zone, WatchNet, BJ's Online. I mean, real forums where you bought and sold that were on the internet on a, now it's on uh, Tapa Talk or something. You can't even get them. You can't even look at them anymore online. It's terrible. Yeah. We did it on Facebook. Facebook has a lot of oversight. You got to be very careful with mm -hmm. Facebook. And there's nothing wrong with it, but you got to have over, you know, you got to be sure that who's in the group is, uh, you know, who you know. And yeah. you don't want, sometimes people post questionable stuff, they'll shut you down in a minute. Mm -hmm. And that's how people kind of, you know, that's why we do it on Telegram. Yeah. So we monitor it. But that's our shtick, and we're, uh, we're out there doing it all the time. We do yeah. it, you know. Well, no, I'm, I'm, well thank you. I'm, it's, it sounds like you're very busy, and I don't want to take more time. But I appreciate you coming in. I have, I'm sure I have a lot more questions that I just – You know how to reach me. I know how to reach you. I have your number. You have my number. <laughs> okay. You can sit out there with, with Fireball or something like that. If yeah, you're yeah. sitting down there <laughs> with your boy, and yeah. it's like, you know what? That Buckley character, I'm going to give him a call, and I'm going to give him a piece of my mind about that group. Yeah. It's like, you know what? I'll pick up the phone. I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Absolute pleasure. I'll, I'll be, we'll be looking for you on TikTok and Great. you know whatever new ventures you have and everything. Okay. Is there a name? How can people, should they go to Tuscany Rose on yeah, Instagram? On, tic, on TikTok, there's on TikTok. Tuscany Rose. And on Instagram, it's Tuscany Rose. Okay. And we've got a link tree with our YouTube and Vukum and all that other stuff. You know, Vukum is our new project. You know, yeah. I mean, we started, the, me and the boys started it, Vukum Media Group. And uh, we're, we're generating money. Which is nice. That's a good start. It's a good start. <laughs> Making money is good. That's yeah, what it's all about. That's great. This is America, isn't it? <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. Yes. It's America. And I like the red, white, and blue bar store Oh, yeah. There. Absolutely. I love it. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Buckley. I appreciate it. And, please. Uh, well, please. Thank you come, so much. Come back Absolute anytime. pleasure, man. Anytime. Pleasure. Thank you. And let's see if our Florida teams are going to do anything. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll speak on that one day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. All oh, right. my God.